Hello, my name is Erica, and today I will be reading to you If I Ran a Zoo by Dr. Seuss. It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up here now are not quite good enough. You see things like these things just in any old zoo. They're awfully old fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open each cage. I'd unlock every pen. Let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. Five legs on the left, five more on the right. Then people will stare and they'll say, what a sight! The zookeeper, new keeper, Gerald's quite keen. That's the gold darndest lion I'd ever seen. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people gawk at the strange, oddest creatures that ever did walk. I'll get for my zoo a new sort of a hen who roosts in another hen's top knot and then. Another one roosts in the other top knot of his, and another in his, and another in his. And so forth and upward and onward. She wins! But that's just the start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised, they'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask when, wait, when they see my strange animals come, where do you suppose he gets these things like that from? His animals all have such very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beast you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can go to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Up past the North Pole with a frozen wind squeal, I'll go, I'll hunt in my skeagle mobile and bring back a family of what do you know. And that's how my new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains as I'm Bobatat, with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant, and capture a fine fluffy bird called the Bustard, who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard, and also a very fine beast called the Flustered, who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch them in caves, I'll catch them in brooks, I'll catch them in crannies, I'll catch them in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch them in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Modifada Potifapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beast that you never saw ever. I'll load up five boats with a family of jokes, whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skins coats, and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats, excepting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the winds of Nantucket and capture a family of lunks in a bucket. And people will say, now I like that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGruzu, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild, and he captures them meek. He captures them slim, and he captures them sleek. 
What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny, I'll capture one cute, I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot, a deer that's so nice he would sleep in your bed if it weren't for those horns that he had on his head. And speaking of horns that are just about queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer, a father, a mother, two sisters, a brother, whose horns are connected from one to the other, whose horns are so mixed they can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end, and can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzled, he's never yet found, if his horns are hers or the other way around. I'll capture them fat, I'll capture them scrawny, I'll capture a scragglefoot mulligatawani. A high-stepping animal, fast as the wind, from the blustering sands of the desert of Zind. This beast is the beast that brave Sheftons ride, when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatawani is fine for my zoo, and so is a Shefton. I'll bring one back too. In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the iota. But I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northern eastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, now be thundered. This new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is really a wonder. Most bees are quite friendly, but still in some lands, some bees are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it, a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thurl whose legs are snarled up in a terrible snarl. And then I'll go out and capture some chugs, some key shooter, mean shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to the African islands of Yurka and bring back a tizzletop turfid mazurka, a kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows an oat for breakfast the first day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach on the 15th of May. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising, a fellow who has a propeller for rising and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texan to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of thing for a bug is just hops. And when I've caught him, the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe with X's that win and with zeros that lose, he'll look mighty good in the zoo of McGrews. I'll bring back gussets, a churkin, and a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of named Tasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but what their names are, I don't know, so don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Natch that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, and no, one, no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with the wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix him up a dish that is just to his taste. Three chicken croats made of library paste, then sprinkled with peanut chucks, pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees, then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts, but that's how the new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets beasts.
I'll go to the Faraway Mountains of Topsk, near the river of Napsk, and I'll bring back an Opsk, a sort of a kind of a thingamabobsk, who only eats rubber barb and corn on the copsk. Then people will flock to my zoo in a mopsk. McGrew, they will say, there's a wonderful jopsk. He hunts with such vim and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's this Russian Paluski whose whose hadiski is rediski redis, and his belly is baluski. I'll get one of them for my zuski magruski. Then the whole town will gasp by why this boy never sleeps. No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There's no telling what that young fellow will do. And then just to show them, I'll sail to Katru and bring back an itchkit, a creep, and a prue, a nurkle, a nerd, and a seersucker, too. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hipponohungus. I'll bring back a flock of our Bipponobungus. The Bipponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Diponodungus, and smarter than those out in Nippononungus, and that's why I'll catch them in Hipponohungus. Instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus, and people will say when they see these bit bounding, the zoo keeper, new keeper, is simply astounding. He travels so far that you'd think he would drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should. But I won't stop until I've captured the Fizzama Wizzama Dill, the world's biggest bird from the islands of Gurk, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses, he have made him the greatest of all the McGrewses. Wow, well, they're all cheer. What the zoo must be worth. It's the gold darned zoo on the face of the earth. Yes, that's what I'll do, said young Dale McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo.